Welcome back, everyone, to Issues of Faith. We are talking with Dr. Elizabeth Barnes. She is an MTSU science education researcher. She's joining us via Zoom um, and, and talking about the intersection of science and religion. And as we went to break, I said I was going to ask how your research was received, where you're saying we need to highlight compatibility more between uh, what's in the Bible and, and science, and, and maybe that would bring more people into science, have them trust it more, and, and take those courses and, and go into that field. So how was that received by, let's say, some longtime science professor who I would think might be skeptical? Yeah. Yeah, so I've gotten a lot of different reactions to this work. I mean, one um, one reaction that I have gotten from a small subset of professors that kind of have this idea that a religion and science have to be in conflict. Oftentimes, you know, they are not of a religious background themselves, and they've kind of been taught this just um, this story that evolution and religion and science and religion have to be in conflict. They kind of push back to this idea. Um, it, but a lot of times, you know, if, if I talk to them enough and we discuss more about the nature of science, I'm willing to get to get them to a point where they say, okay, well, my students don't have to be atheists in order to accept evolution. So can I at least, you know, teach that, right? So I try to get them into small steps um, that way. But yeah, there have been, um, even a famous evolutionary biologist wrote a blog uh, after one of my studies uh, talking about, you know, th thinking that I was trying to, um, that I was trying to teach religion in a science class. So I think that's been the biggest concern that I've gotten from um, from professors is they, they think that we're trying to now teach religion in a science class. And like I said, a lot of this has to do with a historical um, a legal battle that's been going on in the United States for decades where religious groups have tried to get creationism um, taught in science classrooms. So in some senses, you can understand the hesitation of professors to want to now start to bring these ideas into the classroom to make students of faith more comfortable. So I try to really emphasize that we're not trying to teach religion. That's not what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is to take into account a student's identity and try to show them how their identity can be compatible with the material that we're teaching. Um, but then the other reaction that I've gotten that's um, that's more heartening are are the sect of professors that have already been doing these kinds of things in these in the classroom. I'm not sure if what they were doing was the right thing to do, and then seeing in my research that in fact these things that they're doing are making a positive impact or professors that have religious backgrounds themselves and finally feel seen when they see this research. They finally feel like their experiences in the classroom have been validated and now what they're doing um, is something that actually matters. Um, so those have been heartening responses uh, to the research. And so those professors that push back and are, and are uncomfortable with it, your response is, is likely, well, this is about uh, the future and getting more people making more people comfortable going into this field and, and making more people comfortable with science in general. Is that is that maybe one of the things you say? Yes, that's exact. I mean, that's exactly it. So one thing that I've termed kind of this instructional framework is religious cultural competence in evolution education. So I'm telling these instructors, look, like we have a cultural difference between the people that we're communicating to and our own culture, right? And we need to figure out a way to be more effective in that communication so that we can include more people in science. And it matters It matters even more so because the culture that we're talking about comprises a large percentage of the American population, right? So this isn't just something that's gonna impact a small number of people. It's something that can potentially impact a large majority of people who are who are learning about evolution. And. Uh I hope I don't throw you a curveball here, but I mean, how concerned would you say the scientific community is when you see people kind of turning their back on science, as we have seen over the you know last few years or whatever? I mean, is that a concern, or is it just you know they can do whatever they want? Is, is there a concern that we've seen some of that happening? Yeah, I think it's a huge concern within the scientific community. I mean, this is something that you hear people in the halls of, you know, the science department talking about all the time, like the denial of science facts. And it's something that I think historically um, in evolution education, we've been dealing with for a long time. But more recently, um, we've been seeing it happening um, even more in other fields like climate change or vaccine research. Um, and, I, and so I think that the work that I'm doing in evolution education really extends 
extends to those other areas because the same kind of cultural identities, like religious identities or, for instance, political identities, are seen as barriers to being open to, to science from those topics. So your next area, uh, I'm fascinated by the whole uh, evolution. We've talked about that on this show several times, so that's fascinating. What, what, else, are you, what else are you looking at? Yeah, so um, I came to MTSU um, from Arizona State University uh, working on evolution and religion over the last five years. And now that I'm at MTSU, I'm continuing that research on evolution and religion, but now I'm starting a whole new research lab looking at other controversial topics in biology. And one of the things that I'm really interested in looking at um, is people's perceptions of climate change and how political identity is perceived as in conflict with the science of climate change. And if you look at, um, at the instructors teaching climate change, you have the same cultural difference between the instructors and the students that they're teaching. So we have a large percentage of students that identify as conservative, whereas a large percentage of our instructors teaching about climate change identify as liberal. So how can we um, discover instructional strategies that we can use to be more culturally competent to those conservative uh, students that we're teaching climate change to? Wow. Well, you don't take on small issues. Um, so <laughs> how, how do you propose, I mean, how, how are you going to deal with that? What, what, what do you think at this point? Well, I'm just starting this research, so now you're you're um, kind of getting into some ter territory that I'm not completely sure about. I mean, this is what I'm hoping to discover, right? But one thing, if I've learned anything from my research on evolution religion, is the first thing is that you have to get buy-in from the community that you're studying, right? So one of the most effective things that we found is like highlighting what we call religious scientist role models, so people who accept evolution, who identify as religious, and who will talk to religious communities about the science of evolution. So for climate change, I would imagine that we would find the same thing to be true, right? So if we can um, get conservative individuals who are willing to talk about their acceptance of climate change or what they think about climate change to other people in the community, um, particularly conservative scientists, so I'm really, I'm really excited about talking to conservative scientists who are teaching about climate change and how they're um, addressing that in the classroom, because I think we'll learn a lot from them and their experience. So you just said you came from Arizona to, to MTSU. Yeah. What mm -hmm. got you interested in this area of study? How, how did that happen? Yeah, so I started out as an undergraduate biology major, and I became fascinated with the science of evolution. I thought it was just one of the coolest things I ever learned about this idea that all of life on Earth um, has evolved over billions of years and shares a common ancestor with one another was just astounding to me. Um, and at the same time, I was also becoming really interested in social psychology and how what people decide to believe and not believe is often based on their social identities, as well as figuring out that like almost 60% of people in the United States did not accept evolution. And so all of that together got me like thinking about how to study how to increase acceptance of evolution um, because it was just such a foundational component of biology education. And I was not a religious individual myself. I was raised secular um, and I kind of had adopted the same narrative that I see now in my students, you know, that evolution, religion, are completely in conflict and that religion is something that you want to push out of science, right? Not something that we want to highlight the compatibility of. But as soon as I started doing research on this, I found that that idea that science and religion have to be in conflict is one, not is first incorrect. They do not have to be in conflict. Um, and especially if they if they address different questions. So science addresses um, how the world is, what is the natural cause of things, um, whereas religion can be seen as answering questions about how should we behave, does God exist? Science doesn't tell us that, right? Um, so it wasn't true that they had to be in conflict, and highlighting the conflict was actually um, backfiring for science communication. It wasn't effective. It was actually pushing people further away from science and not bringing them towards science. And so that got me studying, okay, so what can I do now as a secular individual and for my secular colleagues who are trying to teach to a largely Christian populace, um, what can we do to try to make evolution education more inclusive for these students? Fascinating. And that's what got me. Well, I, I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated by the whole um, discussion and all of the research. Thank you so much for being with us.
Thank you so much for having me. We could talk a lot longer. That is Dr. Elizabeth Barnes. <laughs> uh, she is with MTSU. Thanks for joining us, and thanks to all of you for watching Issues of Faith. Have a great day, everybody.